Well, lots of hullabaloo over the weekend after Friday's blow up of health care. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. You know, even I make the mistake, it's really not health care, it's health insurance for health care. I mean, all the procedures are still going to be out there, so whether you can afford them is, is the big uh, discussion. When it comes to health insurance, the Affordable Care Act, which is Obama, and the American Health Care Act, which is the thing that just blew up on Friday. Uh, we are lucky to have Joe Trillo here with us this evening. Now, Friday night, we had Bill Koch from the Providence Journal talking about uh, his consultation to the URI basketball program in the university itself. And I told you that Coach Hurley would be here uh, tonight. Uh, that has been moved back to later in the week, uh, in part due to logistics and in part due to this. Uh, Yanni uh, was able to talk to A.D. Uh, Thor Bjorn. Here's a headline. Uh, we have that here quickly. Let's move this thing along. Here we go. URI and Hurley working on a contract extension. Uh, and uh, here's what the A.D. said about that. Any change to Coach Hurley's contract from the one he uh, changed last offseason? Not, as, uh, not officially yet, but okay. Dan and I uh, talked at great length this week. We actually talked, uh, had dinner with the president on Friday night, too. So we're excited about putting things together mm -hmm. uh, formally and making uh, formal announcements hopefully in the next few days or next okay. week and uh, you know we want Dan to be here for a long time and uh, it's it's been really fun working with him and the partnership and I use that word specifically and, and on, on sure. purpose I mean it's a partnership and you know what's been great for me is to say okay coach what are the things you need right uh, by the way the reason it took a while to get to that is because I was on the wrong camera that's on me it's not on Kev Kev was waving at me I thought he was giving you know, anyway um, so I think it's probably timely to have Coach Early on later in the week anyway. We'll talk about his, no doubt, seven-figure deal uh, at the University of Rhode Island. He was, that was part of his situation anyway. Um, and I don't think you should get your panties in a bundle about that. And get, oh, my taxpayer dollars. It's mostly not taxpayer dollars. Uh, we'll discuss it coming up. In the meantime, Friday was a health care disaster. Well, that's what the president keeps talking about uh, when he refers to Obamacare. But uh, here's uh, the latest from Friday through the weekend today. I think the president's disappointed in the number of people uh, that he thought were loyal to him that weren't. President Trump placed the blame on conservative Republicans for failing to pass the GOP plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. Sunday, he tweeted, Democrats are smiling in D.C. that the Freedom Caucus, with the help of Club for Growth and Heritage, have saved Planned Parenthood and Obamacare. I can tell you, no one has been more uh, self-critiquing than, uh, than me. Congressman Mark Meadows, the chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, says he still believes a deal can get done. Conversations over the last 48 hours are really about how we come together uh, in the Republican con uh, conference and, and try to get this over the finish line. But Trump administration officials are signaling they may be ready to work with Democrats to fix health care. I think it's time for... Uh, for our folks to come together. And I also think it's time to potentially get a few moderate Democrats on board as well. Democrats say they're willing to listen if the White House wants to work on a fix for Obamacare, not a complete repeal. We never said it was perfect. We always said we'd work with them to improve it. We just said repeal was off the well, table. Just, meanwhile, the Freedom Caucus says it looks forward to working with President Trump on his next big legislative agenda, tax reform. The president wants to cut taxes for middle-class families, lower the corporate tax rate by 15 percent, and reduce the number of tax brackets. Hmm. Of course... Uh, the revisionist history and the reaction by the president, if it wasn't so serious, would have been laugh out loud funny. Look at this headline in Politico. I never said I'd repeal and replace in 64 days. Well, that's probably true. What he did say is he would get it done in 100 days. He said he would take it up in 100 oh, days. Oh, He never said he would get Are it done in 100 days. Are you not going to go there? Come on. Joseph, the guys, you know, I haven't you know even what? fully you, introduced you, you yet. You go You go with semantics. I mean, it's like oh, we're going to hold him you to the fire. You forget you never hold him to what? Oh, you never, you, you ne what he says doesn't matter. <laughs> it's what he's thinking, which none of us really know. But we think we know. Do I sound like that? I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> you go 
got to be kidding you know, me. Let's give him some credit. The problem is nobody wants to give him credit. Everybody wants to knock him for the little things that they can pick on. Oh, he said he was going to get it done from day one. You, you know what? He, he said he was going to handle all of these things within the first hundred days. He was going to tackle them. He was going to take them on. And let me tell you something about the health care bill. You didn't even ask me the question. I didn't get a chance. The question is, who do I blame? I blame Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan was oh, the Speaker of the oh, House. Oh, you're Jeanette Pirro, too, huh? You're Judge Judy. You're, uh, we didn't pull that one out. Why? We should have pulled did, that did, one out. Did she I agree? Oh, so check this out. You didn't see on Friday? I uh, didn't uh, see. This weekend? She, she, so Saturday, she's got her show, and she, and she does a six-minute two-step on, on Paul Ryan, demands his resignation, right? Trump tweets out in advance, watch Judge Judy tonight. She comes on and says, I've never talked to Donald Trump about this. And then she does an entire whole soliloquy on why Paul Ryan should resign his position as well, Speaker of the House for blowing this thing to kingdom come. You know what? He blew it. So you're like Judge He Joe. should have never put that bill in front of the president, as unprepared as the bill was, and not knowing he had the votes to pass it. Mm-hmm. No speaker. Go to Rhode Island speakers and ask them a question. No speaker ever puts a bill on the floor that they don't know how they're going to manage that bill. It's, it's never done. And, and to do this to the president, I almost think that Paul Ryan was trying to hurt him. Sabotage. Sabotage. Inside I'm not going to say that. I don't think, I don't realistically, just I just think it was incompetence. No, I said I almost. See, there you go with words again. I said I almost want to say that he was trying to sabotage him. I don't want to say he was. Wait a second, I want to make sure I got this right. I'm not supposed to pay attention to the specifics that Donald Trump articulates, but I am supposed to pay attention to yours. No, you never did anyway. Okay. So. I always have. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm just, I just want to make sure whose words I should listen to specifically. All right, let's talk about the issue now. The issue is, should, who, sh- who gets the blame? Donald Trump is blaming the Freedom Caucus. That's who he's blaming. That's the safe blame. He knows he's got to deal with Paul Ryan, whether he wants to or not in the future. But I am telling you as a 16-year legislator that when a bill gets put on the floor, that speaker needs to know where that bill is going. Otherwise, he's incompetent. But I agree completely. I, I agree completely with you. And, and it was a, it was a, a calamity of errors oh, was, they coming put up the to the out. end of the whole thing. They're working on it. The big it question on Friday during the radio show, weekdays 3 to 6 on WPRO, was will they actually put it on the floor to get beat? That would have been a that would have that been would a have worse been a real, disaster. Absolutely. But pulling it and having the Trump administration more or less say we're moving on which is what they said on Friday, we're moving on. We're moving on. We'll let it ex- implode, explode, both yes. words. Yes. And uh, the big losers are Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, the president's words. Now, what part of that am I not supposed to well, take I, for? I, I, I would tend to agree with that, the big losers. First of all, it's naive for the public to think that the Democrats were going to work with them on this. I mean, just with the clip you played, without me talking to Chuck Schumer. What part of the public thought that the Democrats were going to work on this? Oh, I think a lot of the people out there said, let's get everybody together on this bill. It's not going to happen. The Democrats are not going to let Donald Trump. What echo chamber are you operating in? There's nobody in this country that expected that dynamic to play out. Really? Donald Trump talked about repeal and replace. Here's the problem with our president. Okay? He doesn't... Joe, he wouldn't know the details of that bill. He wouldn't know the actual solutions if it hit him in the head and Mar-a-Lago was on the table for, for well, a Well, first bet. of all, the man, you know the it, man is I trying to run the country right oh, now. Oh, oh, yeah. To say he yeah. should take eight hours out of a given day and go into the nuts and bolts every day of the bill. I'm talking about concepts. He has people out the there guy talks to about, give him advice on those issues. The guy, He's the president. The guy talks about lower deductibles and lower premiums as if they are in sync when everybody who knows the equation in healthcare knows that it's lower premiums or higher deductibles. Sorry, there's no, this notion that it's going to be great, it's going to be great, it's going to be great, can only be buoyed by some kind of practical detail and diligence. And that was a problem with the bill. The bill was garbage because it didn't do anything 
that was conceptually promised. The freedom guys are looking for a lower cost and less government mandate. Okay, they you know they you were know what? Look, they I, were I don't getting, agree with you. That the bill was getting, garbage. I agree. His the bill work, was garbage. No, the bill wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. Well, then it's, they were, it's like trying to cook something in the oven. You don't cook it. In, you don't make the recipe up while it's in the oven. They were making this bill which up made it garbage. while it was teed up. I don't know. If it, it's all messed up in the oven, I'm, I generally kind of say, are we eating that? No. That's garbage. But Let's they, throw it they away. They were working on it while it was in the oven. They're changing the recipe. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You're wounded right now. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> you're wounded. No, you're I'm wounded. not. And no. I need to be nice. No, you, you know you're what? You're wounded. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> because you're, because you're I was candidate gonna come and here today. President. I was going to come out what? here today with a, with a truckload of humble pies for you to eat after all the criticism you've done against Trump. And you know what? Keep it going. For what purpose? Because Why would I, I, eat think the day, pie on I think the day is going to come. You said you said the day is going to come when all of the people are going to come back to you and 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 say they were wrong. That's not going to happen. You're going oh, to no, the no, day no, is no, going to come I, I when you're going to realize this president is a good president and he's done a good job. Well, I hope so because the country's got him for four years unless he gets impeached. Well, which is not a but, which is which is a percolating possibility. By the way, when we come back, I, how do you go to a rally on Saturday morning? After that Friday, well, because they we look, our How supporters do you work on Saturday, okay? Our supporters work all week. But the losers, the losers, they don't work. They could have gone to the work. rally. The pathetic. You'll see it when we come back. Pathetic losers. Pathetic losers. He's running for governor. Gubernatorial, don't you think? So you know, they got together on Saturday. A duel of decibels. You don't believe in America. You are anti-American. Talk radio host John DePietro tries to shout down anti-Trump protesters armed with tubas and drums trying to drown out pro-Trump speakers Saturday morning. We were here to disrupt the rally and that's what we did in a very peaceful, nonviolent way. I'm sorry for ruining your safe space. A clash of two rallies. Some took it in stride. I think uh, it's okay that they're here. Uh, the fact that they're playing loud music so it drains out the voices. Hey, it's annoying, but it's, it's their right to do so. But others were up in arms. How disappointed are we that these pathetic losers are here to disrupt our rally? Saturday's gathering, one of several so-called Make America Great Again rallies across the country. Former Republican state rep Doreen Costa helped organize the Providence event. If you voted for President Trump or not, he's your president. All this resists, you can only resist so much, and it's not going to make a hill of beans difference. So let's all get together and support our president. The State House rally ran concurrent with another in the shadow of Smith Hill, a women's rally at the Roger Williams Memorial that organizers say wasn't all about Trump. It's to get our presence out there and let people know that the Women's March is just the first step that we're continuing the fight. <clears throat> Are you a little hoarse from yelling over the people? Actually, the, I the, didn't say much. The interlopers? I wasn't going to try to talk over that noise. But let me say this. We had a good rally. We had a good turnout. I was very happy with all that, that, that the people got together. We had to have it on a Saturday because the Trump supporters worked during the week. Well, that's a, it was a national movement. Yeah, it's a it national was. Movement. Right. Yeah. So you had a couple hundred people. That's beautiful. Yeah, we that's had great. A, we had a, we had a, and a couple hundred op So it looked like a big to-do. You should thank the people who were there to disrupt you because it looked like a bigger crowd. Thank them? No, I wouldn't thank them. Joe, what, first of all, just uh, the, the yelling at them, calling them losers. Is they that, are losers. Is that, is, that, uh, is that good for your gubernatorial candidacy? They're not, they're not going to support me. Oh, no, that's true. They're not my supporters. You're, tr you're going to be the Trump Rhode Island candidate. You're just going to let it fly, baby. If I decided to do it. We haven't decided yet. We're talking to people every day. I, I, I think he's got, I think good, Joe's got all the acumen in the world to be a very good governor. I don't know how you get there screaming in a megaphone. You got it. You got it. Well, then again, you know what? All the rules are off. I got to calm I mean, down. Trump got elected. He got elected. But that's why is he going to be effective? I'm an, I'm an, I'm an argument. Don't tell me you, you didn't have a little. When you woke up Saturday morning, knowing that the whole American Health Care Act thing had blown up, 
don't tell me you didn't kind of drag yourself out of bed thinking, well, we said we were going to do it, so let's go up to the state house anyway. I mean, if you thought you had momentum, and you ha you think you have momentum. See, I don't take this defeat as a Trump defeat, and I know that's the way you th you see it as a Trump. In defeat. part, I see it as a. He's stupid got no clinical knowledge Republican of the bill. caucus in Washington. Ryan screws defeat. up, but this guy big time. But this guy comes in with absolutely none of the instinct and acumen you have for legislative process. And by the way, Wright's Priebus is the best he has, and he doesn't understand it. So. There's nobody. Nobody in understands the process unless they serve in the seats. Paul Ryan has been there long enough. He's the Speaker of the House. He's he had to advise the President on when this bill is ready. I have the votes. I don't have the votes. He should have never Look, told the President he could carry there are this certain nuances over the goal line. Of material that that I don't expect the President to have a command of. But the truth is, is if Donald Trump was sitting right here with us. You and I could both ask him some basic questions about what was in that bill, and he would not be able to tell us. And that's one of the reasons why he couldn't commandeer it. All he was doing was talking about deal making on the surface. He couldn't speak to the bill. Yeah, but that, and you know what? That's all the hearsay that the Democratic opponents are, are talking. He gave indications with his Oval Office press conference. He well, was talking about concept. Did he know that don't every intricacy up. of the bill? I would it's probably agree with It's not about intricacies; it's about concept. Then, and, and by I, the way, I believe he understood the concept. Look, I'm not going to. He also explained two weeks ago that he finally figured out that this thing was a whole lot more complicated than he had thought. The process. No, the bill. And the no, bill. the concept yes. of health care. Yeah, it was a combination. Look, you know what? At the end of the day, we're going to have to get that Democratic across the board partial cooperation to improve the foundation that we have. If we didn't call this thing Obamacare, it wouldn't be so vitriolic. I'm you know, you. what Donald Trump needs to realize is that he needs to get 30 Democrats in that room that become his friends hmm. if he wants to continue well, to what? govern. Repeal, because when, you can't, is count to on, away. when you can't count on the Republicans in your caucus, it's a sad state of affairs. The other thing that's sad is when you have 200 plus members of your caucus Roughly 90% are willing to go along with something and correct it later. Let the Senate make changes. Let's do this. And you have 20 or so holdouts on principle. Mm, I have no, no respect no, 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 no. for the you holdouts. Also had, you also None. had moderate Republicans who were falling off the thing. So they were coming in from both sides because of cost and an untested, uncbo calculated Removal. You of never go against. You don't talk about losing maternity. You don't talk about about you know pharmaceutical change coverage. You don't talk about those things without explaining what it is. You don't talk about 24 million Americans losing coverage without explaining that most that many of those are just going to choose not to because they don't have a tax. See, uh, you know, because gun to their you're such anymore. a wordsmith and a detail kind of guy, you you would be one of those people that would vote against it. Here's what I would say to you if you were in the caucus with me. I would say, guess what, Dan? You have got to support this caucus on this vote. It's too important to us on the big picture. Uh, what, so take and your then I issues. Would ask you, then I would ask you, what is the big picture? The big picture is we've got to repeal and replace Obamacare. We will have plenty of time to make the corrections guess what the big picture to accommodate really is. the people. We're not repealing Obamacare in this country. It's not going to happen. Face it. I'm it needs gonna, improvement. I'm not it's gonna accept that. You're not gonna bring thirty Democrats, you're not gonna bring three Democrats no, to the not. table with the rhetoric that says repeal Obamacare. Well you're gonna to have to say there are things that don't work about the concept and we're gonna to have to improve them. Guess what? That's seven years of growth in the culture will not change. Guess what? It ain't gonna happen. Guess what? It is going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. What? A repeal and replace? A repeal and replace is going to happen. But you know what? It's like saying, you know what? It's like Trump saying. Trump already said it. Let's let it blow up. You know what? Let it blow up. So there, there's another beautiful responsible. Let it blow up. Let it blow up. Well, you, 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 there, are three, there are a handful when, of states that have just one insurer right now, right? So he wants to have a handful of states that, you know, have the insurers leave and the states are without insurers. When there is an insurance to the insurance policy that can be made to make sure those they can things make, happen. They can make saves on, of course on they point can. by point. You're, the, this notion, it's like taking a roof off, right? It's like there's five bad shingles on the roof, but it's old. And you say, you know what? Okay, we're going to remove the roof 
and then replace it. But the five shingles are fixed. If you want to say repeal the bill and replace it, guess what? You're really only fixing five shingles. And that's what's going to happen because there are certain things that the public, including Republicans and conservatives, you know, everyone's really tough on this whole thing until they're faced with the cost of having to have a procedure. And then all of a sudden, everything changes. Oh, this yeah. is a complete oh, yeah. misnomer it, yeah. that you guys is... are repealing and replacing. It's not going to happen. Stop with the two words and maybe we'll move this country forward. Well, Go see your president and tell him to knock it I don't, off. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there were too many promises made by the Republicans in the caucus in Congress. There were too many promises made by Trump himself that they need in order to save their face or repeal and replace. I don't care if they re repeal and replace it with 90% of what's already in Obamacare. No! Oh, I just I just won the argument. Let's talk about what's happening on Smith Hill when we come back. I won the argument. This is hard. <laughs> I'm happy, but it's hard. <laughs> I have been serving our state for most of my adult life. And I have been rewarded with the support of so many people. And with the knowledge that each oh, and every that's uh, Teresa Piva Weed. She's exiting this week after resigning her leadership position. Uh, she's going to take a hospital position and uh, and then be a judge, right? That's what everybody knows. I would that. assume that's what's going to happen. Uh, how do you think this changes the dynamics of uh, the state house? I think this is a very good thing for the uh, the general assembly as a whole. I think that uh, it's bad for the governor. She lost her rubber stamp. And that's all Teresa Piperweed was doing with the governor. She wasn't challenging her on anything. She wasn't forcing her to uh, to make any changes. And, and I think it's going to be a good thing. Yeah, I think the two-year free college tuition thing is uh, DOA at this point. Nick well, Mattiello doesn't like it. Uh, Teresa Piperweed was hanging in there yeah. with her. Uh, I think the car tax for Mattiello is in much better shape because Piperweed was opposing it. And I think that uh, Ruggiero... Is, is somewhat um, ambivalent about it. Although I'll tell you, Nick Mattiello's got to be careful. Um, I've been screaming about the car tax for the 17 years I've been here. But I thought the best we could do is, re is repeat what Massachusetts has. He's going to have, if he even finds the money for the car tax repeal, he's going to have property taxes so lopsided in this state, it's going to be a mess. So, just well, saying. But if details. They, I know it's not about details. No, but if they guys. give the cities and towns the money that they're losing, and that's the whole problem. It's not just that. We're trying though. to do it. Well, 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 we'll have you back for a good analysis because I have to give uh, Joe credit. He does understand everything that goes on at the state house and legislation, how to make the soup. I just wish he'd bring some of that. Well, you know what? I already already got him. <laughs> Did you hear what he said last segment? No, I don't care if ninety percent of the bill yeah. is still in there. That's that's right? my well, argument. Brother. There's got to be some things in the bill that are in Obamacare. The fact is, I mean, you take the basic thing. It's basic health coverage. So there's going to be things. <clears throat> I won. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Last word and we come back. Actually, the two cliches that prevent us from having productive health care legislation. One, Obamacare. Two, repeal and replace. If you call it something different than Obamacare, it takes the politics out. If you stop yakking about repeal and replace and improve it, it'll get done. And I don't care how much yelling and screaming we do about it. See you on the radio at 3 on WPRO tomorrow. Bye.